All right. So what I want to talk about in this video is I'd like to go ahead and go over both writing workshops one, two, and three. All right. And talk about these and then use the example or the sample that's provided for you as a starting point. We're going to be building upon writing workshop three in tomorrow's video where we'll cover some elements of basic argumentation. But let's go back and let's start with writing workshop one. Writing workshop one starts you off with a template. And it's basically simply your introduction. That's what I'm going on here about. Introduction that should end with your thesis statement. And down here at the very bottom, okay, I've got a template. Now, template is sort of set up in a general format. So if I were to use this, what I would tell you to do is you're going to want to obviously remove anything that has uh, highlights that left. So if I were typing my paper, I would come in here, put that there, and put section 71, not really important. Typically for the due date, I might consider like when this paper is ultimately due. I'm just going to put 29th of June, uh, 2019 for now. And then title, I'm just going to simply, for a placeholder, I'm just going to say, let's just say I'm doing Watchmen. And obviously, I'd want more to a title. And of course, drop down right here. And now I'm going to check mine because I don't remember if I undid this or not. Yeah, make sure that's set to double space. And I'm good to go. So in the beginning, I could start typing my introduction. Okay. And that's really what Writing Workshop 1 calls upon you to do. So if I turn back to the sample paper, and yet yeah, they were actually using Watchmen here, this part right here is all that's required for Writing Workshop 1. You should have an introduction that leads you to a thesis statement. And here is their thesis statement. It's one sentence at the end of the paper. All right. That's all that's required for writing workshop one. But that's not the only thing we're working on. So the next step, once you have this part in place, and these are designed to give you little markers. You could go post this and get feedback from me if you went ahead and posted it um, in the forums, which I should have up. If not, I will address that today. Um, and I would take a look at it and I would give you feedback specifically on this. And then ideally you would revise this and then you would move on to writing workshop two. Now writing workshop two doesn't have a template. Writing workshop two is simply an expansion upon what we've already started. And it's focusing on background, all right? Background that would follow your introduction. Now your introduction doesn't need to be super long. So the background information, now one of the things they didn't do here is they should have had a citation here uh, indicating th that this is summarization. But right here, starting off the bat, they're summarizing the basic elements of what transpires in the story. Okay. And roughly here, I think it probably goes for pretty much these three paragraphs right here. They chose to focus very specifically on a rundown, brief rundown of the story. And so in about two to three paragraphs, you could use this if you needed to provide any definitions or anything you think the audience needs to better understand what it is you're going to be talking about in your argument. So somewhere in the range of two to three paragraphs, and in those two to three paragraphs, you should obviously summarize the story. Even though it may come up in the course of your argument, your primary purpose of your argument isn't to simply recount the story of the graphic novel. So somewhere inside of here, it would probably be a good idea for you to give us the rundown, the basics, what are the main points that transpired in the story itself, so that if we haven't read it, we would have something to work with. All right? And you'll notice here I go on to talk about the thesis statement being that specific point. The background kind of opens up onto the rest of the paper. Okay. Now the next part, once you've established the introduction, the thesis, and you've established background, writing workshop three, this is the largest section of our paper. And this is the, the bulk of our paper. Okay. This is where we're going to be diving into. And if I scroll back here, if you remember last week I posted this here. This is writing workshop one. Background Writing Workshop 2, Argument Writing Workshop 3, this will be the largest section of our paper. If you wanted to have a general idea of length, let me go ahead and use this as an example here. So, Writing Workshop 1 is only one paragraph, so we're still on page 1. Writing Workshop 2, they gave us, gave us three paragraphs. This got us to about a third of the way down on page 2. 
Writing Workshop 3 would need to ideally carry you somewhere ideally onto page 4 or 5. Now, this student was doing this when I had the paper as a longer requirement, so I believe they actually took this to, let's see, I'm scanning along here. There should be a clear transition um, to my counter argument. I think this is where it is. So there's somewhere on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So their argument carries them to somewhere on page six. Okay. Yours does not need to carry that long, but it does need to make up the bulk of your paper. So if your argument and your background and your setup and your introduction and background gets you to page two, I would hope the argument can at least get you to somewhere in the page four or five range. Okay. And what you would do inside of that is you would take whatever points it is you're making in regards to your argument in support of that claim, whatever those reasons might be. So <clears throat> in this one, they talk about the message of Alan Moore's Dave Gibbons Watchman reveals the true nature of the superhero narrative as one that is dark and self-destructive. Uh, through situations that affect each superhero's psyche and the way the characters interact uh, with each other because of it. Okay. Now, if I were to break down the way this is laid out, okay, so obviously I'm going to be talking about Watchmen, but in addition to that, I'm going to be talking about superhero narratives, dark, self destructive elements inside of them, superhero psyche character interaction all of these things are places that I not only can I search for information when doing research but these would also serve me well as points of um, things that I need to unpack things that I need to discuss further so say for example if I wanted to talk about uh, true nature of the superhero narrative let's say I wanted to talk about the dark destructive nature of superheroes let's say I plug that into Google, I find an article, then I want to spend some time unpacking that, talking about that, referencing the article itself in support of that, and then connecting that, whatever it's talking about, to specific examples inside the text. Okay, so I'm drawing specific parallels, specific connections. Okay, and I need to find multiple sources so I could do that a couple times, maybe get two paragraphs out of it. Okay. You see right here the average two paragraphs, they can give me almost half a page, which would be great. And then, of course, I could go on to talk about um, superhero psyche, okay? Not only can I talk about that and find external sources, but then I can talk about all the different characters in Watchmen. Most of them seem to be suffering, by the way, from some form of mental illness, okay? And, of course, ultimately, I'm talking about this in relationship to this being something more of an adult content, if you go back to my very beginning here, um, I might even talk about how this is has a depth to it, something that would speak to somebody beyond just simply kid stuff. All right. So <clears throat> writing workshop one should get you to the end of that thesis, then followed by writing workshop two, which should provide your audience with context background information they need to know about the story itself and other things so that they can follow along. And then afterwards, you need to then lay out your argument. This is where you're going to take those reasons inside of your thesis. You're going to unpack them. You're going to explore them. The idea being that everything you're going to be presenting here is designed to prop up your thesis statement. Okay. And then ultimately when we get to writing workshop four. We'll start talking more about how that connects directly to what's called the counter argument and how that worked. But we'll finish that and we'll be talking about that next week. Right now, between now and next week, your primary aim should be to work on your introduction, your background, and your argument and putting it all together. And in tomorrow's video, we'll talk more about putting things together, specifically how to approach the structure of argumentation. I've got a little bit of stuff that I like to use to try and make it a little bit easier on you. But again, continue to read over. This is not a perfect example, but it's a fairly decent example to work from. Okay. And then ultimately, once we've got all that in place, we can then move on. Now, in addition to Writing Workshop 4, I have provided some links to the University Writing Center. Talks a little bit more about argument. I provided some stuff with that. Talking about the use of evidence. Okay. Introduction of what counts as evidence. Things like that. Because you do need to find external. And then talking about reading to write. This is basically strategies for how to gather information and employ it. Um, in addition to talking about some stuff with regards to the um, information surrounding um, 
argumentation structure. I will try to uh, perhaps post some other stuff uh, specifically focusing on probably connecting to the research chapters here. If you haven't looked at these, I don't, I'll try, I will go back and find out which one of these chapters specifically digs further into doing research, even though that's what they're all about. I'll try and pull some uh, pointed information from some of that and see if I can incorporate that to help guide you through that process as well. So look for that video tomorrow night. Make sure that you're in the discussion forums now posting um, and then replying. Well, actually, you only have to reply in one of the forums because if you remember, if you're two forums, the first one asks you that the second one actually doesn't actually necessarily ask you. It actually to actually go ahead and start creating writing workshops one and two. So you should be working on that to turn something in. So you should be getting some feedback from me once you have something to submit. Okay. And that one you have a little bit more time on, but do remember that forum one, there is stuff that's due tonight for you to post and then to reply to. The rest of your time then can be turned over to looking at and getting writing workshops one and two ready. And then once you've got that in play, you can turn those into me and then continue working on writing workshop three as well.